Laser devices, or light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation, are usually known for their spatial coherence, which means concentrating a beam of light at a specific point, which allows them to reach great distances. However, they also meet requirements that differentiate them from other light sources, which mainly refer to the characteristics of the photons of which they are composed. Photons are elementary particles that are responsible for the transport of electromagnetic waves, and can be interpreted simultaneously as waves or particles. If we analyze them as waves, they will have a frequency of oscillation and wavelength that are directly related to the amount of energy they can carry, and that in the range of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible to our eyes determines the color of the light as well. If, on the other hand, we analyze photons as particles, we can consider them as small packets of energy, which, as we will see later, is an essential part of the operation of these devices. Understanding this, a laser is not only spatially coherent, but also temporally coherent. That is to say that the photons emitted have the same frequency and phase. A case totally contrary to the light emitted by the sun, in which the light is scattered in all directions, photons of multiple frequencies are emitted simultaneously and the waves are not in phase. Because of these special characteristics, laser devices are often used in a wide range of applications such as manufacturing, medical procedures, and surface reconstruction for autonomous vehicles. Although there are different devices capable of producing a light beam of such characteristics, laser diodes are one of the most widely used methods due to their simplicity and low manufacturing cost, so in this video we will see how a laser diode works. In previous episodes, we saw how a common diode as well as the light-emitting diodes worked, so this time I will not go into much detail regarding the passage of electrons through the different materials, but we do have to understand in broad terms the process by which light is emitted. In a light-emitting diode, we will generally have two semiconductor materials joined together, on the one hand an n-type semiconductor that has an excess of electrons, and whose charge carriers are the electrons themselves. And on the other hand a p-type semiconductor that has a lack of electrons and whose charge carriers are the gaps left by the electrons. When these two materials are joined and connected to a battery in direct polarization, the electrons will pass from the n-type semiconductor to the p-type semiconductor. When this happens, what is known as spontaneous emission will occur. At the point of contact between the two materials, electrons and gaps will recombine, and due to a difference in the amount of energy that electrons can have in the atoms of each semiconductor, a photon will be released. While this recombination occurs spontaneously whenever an electron and a gap are in close proximity, this can take a short period of time, on the order of nanoseconds. During this time, what is known as stimulated emission, which is part of the acronym LASER, can occur. More specifically, if a photon with the needed energy passes through the place where an electron and a gap meet, it will cause them to recombine, and the new photon will have the same frequency, polarization and phase as the first photon. To enhance this behavior, laser diodes also have an intermediate semiconductor layer, which has a dual function. Firstly, to promote the recombination of electrons and gap in a given volume, and secondly, to function as a channel for the photons, because, given that it has a different reflection index to the other semiconductors, at certain angles, the walls will behave like mirrors. At this point, although we will have a certain amount of photons generated by stimulated emission, we will continue to have mostly photons generated by spontaneous emission. To achieve this goal we will need an extra element, reflectors. At one end of the semiconductor array we will put a fully reflective coating, and at the opposite end we will put a coating that is highly reflective, but lets out a small amount of light. This arrangement generates what is known as a fabry perot resonator, in which the photons continuously bounce back and forth between the two ends, continually generating more stimulated emission and allowing the light beam to exit from only one end. However, we still have another problem. Even if the oscillation frequency and phase of the photons is exactly the same at the time of emission, the phase can vary each time the photon is reflected. To exemplify this, let's analyze the photon only as a wave and trace its trajectory. If we compare the trajectories generated each time the photon moves in the same direction, for example, from left to right, we will realize that the phase is changing and as a consequence the photons that will go outwards will not be temporally coherent. 
Fortunately, the solution is quite simple. We must adjust the distance between both ends to be a multiple of half the wavelength of the photons we want to amplify. Let's suppose for example that this distance is equal to 3 times half the wavelength. This time, if we trace the trajectory of a photon, we will realize that every time it is reflected it follows exactly the same path, no matter how many times it happens. In other words, we will be creating a standing wave, and the photon beam that will eventually go out will be coherent in both frequency and phase. We would only be missing the last detail. Although the photon beam will be temporally coherent, due to the randomness in the direction in which the photons are emitted at the moment of recombination, the resulting beam will have a small spatial dispersion. Because of this, a lens is usually integrated. This lens redirects the photons and makes them all travel in parallel, or in more technical terms, generates a collimated beam. As we could see, a laser diode does not differ much from a common diode, and therefore has several of its benefits, it's easy to produce, has a long life because they are composed of semiconductors, and can be built in really small sizes. Moreover, like common light-emitting diodes, depending on the materials used in their construction, the frequency and wavelength of the resulting beam can be controlled. However, despite all these benefits, they also have some limitations when compared to other types of laser devices. They tend to heat up due to the current passing through the semiconductor, which can also affect their performance and the quality of the resulting beam. Because of the way in which the light will be emitted, even with the use of a lens, the collimation is not perfect. And finally, they are usually not very powerful. There are several types of laser diodes but at least with this you should have a better basis for understanding how they work. I hope you liked this video, remember to subscribe and if you think what I do is worthwhile, you can also support me on Patreon to make more and better videos. That's all for now and see you in the next video.